Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name is Rodney Dupree. I'm Kara Erickson. And we are on season three, episode wow. one. And it's been a while since we've been Time doing flies this. Flies when you're having fun. I think so. I yes, think so. Indeed. And we got some cool stuff from y'all. It's really uh, kind of a potato genre. What mm -hmm. we going with this time? It's a potato show. It's ball potatoes. It's baked potatoes. It's slam potatoes. It's Lots every of kind cheese. of mm -hmm, a lot of cheese. Even vodka, which is made out of potatoes. There it is. This is the South after Screwdriver, all. Screwdriver, lemon icebox pie. Yes. Y'all hang on. Do with potatoes, but that's all right. <laughs> Y'all hang on. Cajun living and cooking's fixing to start right about now. Tide line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, and mustard greens. That's how we live, and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a losing a Line, trap line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens, that's how we live, and it sure feels fine. What you doing? I'm getting ready for the potato show. Oh, okay, so what is this thing called? It's the mandolin. Okay. Look what it, it does. It, oh gosh. It makes the most beautiful little potato chip okay. you ever had. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'm going to tell you what, we got some cool stuff coming, but I want to talk about our sponsors for okay. this time. Uh, we have Powertrain. Yeah. And uh, Keith Hunter and those guys over there are professionals. Absolutely. Um, you can go by there, get your transmission, your drive train, that type of stuff. Anything you need within transmission, he's there. It's, mm -hmm. um, and he's been in business a long time in a century. Shoot, he's yeah. been there for over 25 years. Okay. Uh, he's been doing transmission since he was a teenager, worked at all the big uh, places around here from All Star all the way around. So if it, anything transmission, you go to him. I gotcha. I um, gotcha. Okay. Locally owned and operated, and the phone number is even better. It's 622-2277, which means cars. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So he gotcha. likes to eat, too, so <laughs> okay. I'm going to tell you what. Um, having him as a sponsor mm -hmm. is really nice, and I want to say one thing. When you go there, they have one policy. Mm -hmm. It's honesty. That's so important. It especially is. Especially nowadays. It is. Absolutely. So thanks, Powertrain. All right. Thanks, Powertrain. Now, tell me what you got over here. Well, I have got a screwdriver. So, you know, since we're doing the potato show, everything has to be about potatoes except the lemon icebox pie. That's just, that's a whole nother story. Well, you got to have some pie. But we got to have, we got to have liquor too. So this is a screwdriver. And really all it is, is just orange juice and vodka. And really for this, it's a matter of taste, you know, because vodka doesn't have a lot of flavor, but it's got to burn. So I just kind of mixed it to taste, and you can, you know, you can zhuzh it up. Get a little fancy. Little, well, they get a little fan well, we got to be fancy. We mm -hmm. fancy down here. I, I did a little research on the screwdriver, and mm -hmm. that comes from World War II. Oh. Uh, when Americans were overseas, mm -hmm. and uh, they did some research on where that name comes from, mm -hmm. because the Americans didn't have spoons. So they stirred it with the screwdriver. Is that right? That's where it comes from. Okay. I, did, I never knew that. Well, for this, you know, if you want to get technical about it, um, about two ounces of orange juice to an ounce of vodka, your favorite, you know, Grey Goose or whatever you like. And got a cute little umbrella because we got to make it fancy. <laughs> digging it, digging it. Now, yes, we got a drink. How about we get things going with the food? Okay. I'm ready. Here we go, y'all. Coming up. All right, Kara. We're down to a cool recipe that I right. found on the internet. It's okay. easy au gratin potatoes. Okay, I'm, I'm all about the easy. As you start putting it together, okay. I'll tell them what we're using. All right. Um, we're using those Simply Potatoes, mm -hmm. which is, um, they did all the work for you, peeling them and everything. Thank goodness. <laughs> and you were using a cup of sour cream, okay. a can of celery soup, okay, and that's what you're stirring soup. in first okay. right here. Then we have four ounces of sharp cheddar cheese, okay. half a cup of green onions, and here's where you can vary a little. You can mm -hmm. use a cup of corn flakes, seasoned bread crumbs, or there's several things you can use in mm -hmm. there, but um, 
I really like using the seasoned uh, croutons. The croutons, yeah, because yeah, you get a little extra season in there with them. Croutons. And uh, we had to crunch those up from mm -hmm. crouton farm. That was a highly technical process of putting them in a plastic bag and using a heavy glass. Exactly. And then um, we're using butter and then parsley on top. So it's really, really easy. Mm -hmm. What you do is heat your oven to 350. You spray in your baking dish. Mm -hmm. You are mixing the first two together, mm -hmm. mixing the rest of them we together. Get the potatoes in there. And get those mixed in. So it's so easy, you, you know, that really I, we is. haven't well, even had to light the stove yet. And the fact that we're using these is really a time saver because, you know, peeling the potatoes and then trying to find some way to cut them up. Is exactly, just, exactly. That's, that's what made me, me, because it's, here it is summertime, we're doing this. And it's you too try. hot in the kitchen. <laughs> and no. if you don't like the heat in the kitchen, you got to get out. Absolutely. <laughs> I did bring you another spoon okay. for when you have to put these together. So at the end you'll well, be putting the croutons and the butter. Well you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I got a glove on. I'm going to get that butter and them croutons in there with my hands. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Well let me tell you. Uh, au gratin is a decadent French dish of sliced potatoes baked with cream and grated cheese topped with breadcrumbs dating back to 1788 in southern France. So they've been Ollie. making these au gratin so long it ain't even funny. Oh yeah they just... <laughs> That should be the national dish, I would think. Could so be. we got the, the crushed up croutons. And this is just room temperature butter, so we can get it in there and That's, get our hands dirty. Uh, they, they call for uh, unsalted butter. That's real butter. That's okay, real butter, real but butter. they didn't put the salt in. Gotcha. And it really is just easier to kind of get in there with your hands. I agree with you, too. You, know. you can sit there with a spoon, but you're going to make a bunch your, of noise. Well, and, and you can take your frustrations out. You'll have the cat jumping up and down and everything. <laughs> with all the crazy stuff. Yep. <laughs> Should I spray this for you? I think that would be good. I'm going to get my hands dirty. So and then we're just going to go ahead and transfer this uh, beautiful potato mixture to that dish. I think I got these. I'm going to try to make sure I don't have any lumps in that butter. Well, this just is be just a little bit sweeter top. for the guy who gets, I, it, gets that one. I guess so. <laughs> all right. So we're just going to go ahead and transfer this into this dish. And then how long you bake it for? This is 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. So, and you'll put this on it before, but when it comes out, they want you to sprinkle some parsley mm -hmm. on top. Well, it just well, makes it pretty. Well, it's fancy when it you is. get the parsley well, on that's top. We all about fancy. This is the fancy show. <laughs> telling you. And putting that on top, well, mm -hmm. while you're putting that on, I'm gonna show you what we made earlier. Just so happened by the power of TV. All right. We happen to have made some already. That's beautiful. The parsley on there just gives it good color. That's the boom. That that is. That's the pop. So the the butter in there and that that little crust on top. That mm -hmm. that's what you really like in there. That crunch. You mm -hmm. want the crunch. You want oh, the yeah. the cream, the crunch, and the. And I think the I think the um, you know the croutons you can get the the cheese croutons to just add a little bit more depth of flavor if you wanted, and I think that would probably be a little more flavorful than the cornflakes, you know. I know um, cornflakes probably will work. I'm weird about cornflakes, you know. Cornflakes are uh, it's a breakfast food. That's just weird for me. <laughs> well, if you got some in the pantry, go you ahead and use it. Gotta do what you gotta though. do. And you could probably even sprinkle a little bit more cheese if you like a lot of cheese, oh, which yeah. I do. Oh, so. yeah. And you throw jalapenos in there if you Oh, like yeah. That'd be great. I'd be eating That'd it, That'd be too. Cajun style almost. <laughs> All right, y'all. We got another one coming up. We're going to be tasting this one, so y'all hang on. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life-threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com the new, completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark, located at the Port Vincent Bridge, is now back open and better than ever. 
with biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans style pressed po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking has the largest selection of grills and outdoor cooking supplies in South Louisiana. Let our team help you select the right equipment for your cooking needs. Our unique inventory of cookware is second to none. Whether you are looking for a new cast iron or ceramic coated pot and burner, a new charcoal, gas, or pellet grill, or anything to help you with your outdoor cookout, come to Galvez Hardware because good food brings people together. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Carol, we got something else coming, but you got to try all the um, I've easy been waiting. au gratin potatoes, okay. which was really easy. We didn't even have to use a stove this mm. time. It's um, what's cool about that is that's, really that's about as quick as you can go right mm -hmm. there. I mean, you the oven 20 to 30 minutes. So Rachel Ray would do a little dance if she got to try this. Oh, I ain't gonna do that. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> You'd have to eat way more than a couple I'd bites eat, anyway. I'd have to get one of them screwdrivers for that. <laughs> so our next thing is people don't know about it here in the South. It's not something that's really popular here. It's called mm -hmm. poutine, which is actually French fries covered in gravy and cheese curds. Okay. Cheese it, curds. Okay. It is the it is the national dish of, of Canada. Canada. Okay. Now they use cheese curds. I looked at every store around here. They don't sell curds. That's hard to eat. We gotta go to Wisconsin. But as I read around mozzarella mm -hmm. is okay. Okay. So there's a million gravies you can make. Mm -hmm. We did a little thing with this gravy here and it's pretty cool okay. if you want to tell them the ingredients that All we right, have in so this. Alright, so I got four tablespoons of butter right here and I'm just going to melt this down and I'm going to add a little flour to it because that's, you know, the basis for any kind of gravy is going to be flour and butter. And then we're going to stir it till it's smooth, almost kind of like a, like a blonde roux. Right. Almost. So I'm going to let this melt down a little bit. And then to that we're going to add some chopped shallot which is like a smaller onion. So we're going to talk about way. that later. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, good. And then we're going to have um, a clove of garlic. garlic. Mm -hmm. Minced clove of garlic. And then I have like a little bit of, looks like some crushed peppercorn. Yeah, too. See, freshly nice crushed. Mm -hmm. Then we have some ketchup and Worcestershire sauce. And the thing about ketchup, you know, that's tomato, so it's going to give it kind of an umami kind of flavor, and especially that Worcestershire, you know, that Worcestershire has is, is got a lot of flavor. So all of that will actually increase what a beef stock will mm -hmm. do for you. Yeah, so I'm just going to layer in this. So as you start stirring this yep. and getting this going, I'm going to talk a little bit about poutine where most folks around here don't know about it. Okay. It's a dish of french fries, cheese curds topped with brown gravy mm -hmm. created in Quebec, Canada in the late 1950s. Okay. Um, I say it sounds French. Poutine. Poutine. Is Poutine. Exactly. The yeah. varieties are you can use mozzarella cheese mm -hmm. versus the cheese curds. Right. Because that is hard to find. I've seen them once or twice, but now, it is hard to find. Sweet potatoes can be used as a healthy alternative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Poutineries like Montreal's La Quibis, Okay. Uh, was created in the innovation to popularize, popularize poutine mm -hmm. and they have since added things back and forth to poutine from mm -hmm. the very beginning. Let me turn this down a little bit. There we go. So um, you can put chicken and green peas, ground mm -hmm. beef, pulled pork. Okay. I got, I got something you. better for you here. Okay. Some poutineries frequently offer limited promotional specials like Thanksgiving poutine with turkey stuffing and cranberry oh, wow. in it all over it. Yep, yep, That's yep. It's got everything in it. And over in that area, up that mm -hmm. way, some fast food establishments like Wendy's, KFC, and Arby's, you can putinize <laughs> your fries. That just, that don't sound right. Well, it's just what they do up there. <laughs> that's just, that's how they do it. 
Now that just sounds that just sounds that just sounds dirty. In the nineteen nineties, okay. In the nineteen nineties, disco fries were created. So that's more of what people in the nineteen nineties. Really, that sounds like something from the nineteen seventies. Well, disco fries. Well, they kept dancing over there for I twenty more years. I guess they did. I guess they did. The first poutine festival was in Warwick, Quebec in mm -hmm. 1933. Okay. So they've been cooking this for a million years. So this is their, yeah, this is their, it's kind of like our gumbo down here. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. I would say so. Our jambalaya. So as the recipe, as we played with this before, mm -hmm. once you put your beef stock in there, yep. so the last thing to do is you're going to taste for salt and pepper. Right. Which, and I've, I added the cracked black pepper in there. Right. So, so I've got the, I'm just letting these soften up and they're just kind of getting familiar. So the garlic and the onions are going to soften up. We've kind of got a little browning on that, that flour. That's so already, like little, that's pretty nice looking I know. gravy going well, that's there. Pretty, I ain't never done this before. That's good that. stuff I know, though. Look that's, at me. That's a different kind of gravy yes, going. Yes, indeed. So I'm going to go ahead and add the ketchup and the Worcestershire for that umami. That umami flavor, and then we're going to add the beef stock and just let it hang out for a little bit. And this is going to add a little bit of color to. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can smell it. it smells so good. It smells so good. All right, Kara, looks like your uh, your roux there is looking uh, good. My roux is ruined. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of this beef stock. Okay. And I've been adding it slowly because when you're working with flour, and butter, you don't want to have lumps. So I'm just, I'm taking my time. So what we've done, and uh, again, I say through the power of TV, we um, actually have got some fries going. Like I said, we didn't have any cheese curds, but we do have mozzarella. So you, you're putting the mozzarella on top. Mm -hmm. Now I got a little kicker that goes on here. The gravy goes on top. Yes. You will indeed. never use ketchup again once you start using this. Once you poutine them, is that yeah. what it said? Yeah. Poutineify. If, <laughs> if I get my guy from the back to bring that little bit of steak I got back there, and I'm going to tell you oh, what. Oh, yes. Indeed. I've already kicked it up a notch. Yes, indeed. Look at here. So. They might so not do this in Quebec. This with, maybe not. <laughs> but here we do. A little bit of steak or mm -hmm. pulled pork or whatever you like to put on top. Shoot down here. We put some crawfish on there and, <laughs> and go to town. There we go. There we go. Got All right, y'all. There's a new way to make some gravy. Yes. A new indeed. way for some poutinized french fries. Poutinized. And we got some more good cooking coming. So y'all hang on. Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies night on Wednesdays, Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Crawfish season is coming soon. It's time to move into the 21st century with the new high-performance cookers and super boilers. With our new state-of-the-art technology, the 120-quart pots come to a boil in under 7 minutes and the return boil in under 2 minutes. This fast return boil is key to perfectly cooked crawfish, all while using far less propane. Now, no more mushy crawfish using the old, outdated slow boilers. Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you. A very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Kara. 
I've been waiting on this, but I gotta bring back the uh, the sardine and mustard. We had somebody Let's not back talk there. About that. He tasted it. And he said he probably won't try it again. Okay, understood. It's an acquired taste. So we, we just we're gonna move on from that. We're gonna. I've been waiting on, on this. All I mean, right. Tell me tell me something about it. All right. So this is a lemon ice box pie, and this is just one of my favorite pies to cook. It's so simple. It's so easy and it's it's just delicious. It's it's tart and it's sweet and you add a little bit of whipped cream to the top and it kind of cuts the tartness. So it's just my my very favorite. And it's not pie. a bunch of ingredients. It is really not. So you're going to take a 10 inch. This is a 10 inch pie crust. They have one that's a little smaller, but you want to get the bigger one because we're going to be using two amp two cans of sweet condensed milk. Is that milk. graham cracker? Graham cracker crusts. Yep. Which to me that just goes the best. There's all kinds of different pie crusts. Yeah, I'd rather that. And then I have three eggs here, but I'm going to use two yolks and one whole egg. So I'm going to start with the first egg, and you notice I'm cutting it on the table. Yeah, yeah. We don't uh. Oh, that's crack so. Crack on the on the side. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. We see. So that. and these are room temperature eggs. I'm not sure why that. Look at here. I've got something. That, that matters, we throw but it these does. In. Oh. Oh, that's supposed to have ice. Are we just going to put eggshells in it? Yeah. Oh, well, Oscar hey. the Grouch moved out. Whatever so works. Can... Whatever works. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this egg because I only want to take the yolk of this egg. So I'm just going to kind of lightly. So the yolk, you want the middle. The I, just want the, I just want the yellow. And some people for this take, I'm going to put it over here. Some people take this white and we'll make a meringue out of it for a lemon oh, pie. Right, but with the ice box, I find the meringue tends to get a little chewy, so I prefer the the whipped cream. Or nothing. Or nothing, it's good with just nothing. It's good with, with whatever. Gotcha. So, so you can see I just kind of took the yolk out, I separated, I just used the eggshell to kind of separate. I like that. Yeah, this is a, this is the old fashioned way to do it. So this is how my mama showed me. And like I said, you can save that. I don't like to waste food, so right. you can make a meringue out of it, but if you're like me, you can just take it and make scrambled egg whites <laughs> later. I mean, why not? So thank you so much. So now what I'm gonna do, because these yolks, you know, tend to not mix well, and I'm not gonna be using a hand mixer. You can use a hand mixer. Um, normally I do, but I'm just going to mix it with a whisk. Oh, gonna break style. up. Oh, absolutely. Going to break these whites up. I'm sorry, not the whites, the yolk. Break these yolks up. And then I have here a cup of lemon juice. Oh, wow. And you can use the fresh squeeze lemon juice or if you, you want to. Or you can get the one out the bottle. Which is what I did. Right. I have no, no shame in my game. So I'm going to add this into it. And I'm just going to mix it up. Two. And then you could also take lemon zest. You could take the lemon itself after you've squeezed it and you can use a, a fine grater and grate that zest into it. And it looks really, really pretty, especially if you do like a key lime, because you can do this with lime juice too. Right, right. Yes, so I've seen them take that zest and even make a curl out of it and put it on top. Of oh cream. yeah, that, it, it just makes it so nice. Now I'm adding two cans of sweetened condensed milk and this is all the sugar you're gonna need right here. This sweetened condensed milk. This stuff is so sweet. I remember that uh, getting a oh, buck with so and finding that in the pantry. Oh gosh, you got into it oh, in the pantry. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Only once. Uh, <laughs> you learned your lesson, Only huh? Once. Yeah. But this is what gives it that sweet, and it just has this. Just I don't know something about the flavor of the sweetened condensed milk. It's just so good. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's nothing you can even substitute. Like There's that. really not. I mean, they have it if you're dairy free. You know, they have the coconut milk version, which I've never ah, tried. Yeah, yeah. I can't really tolerate coconut milk, but I've heard it's really good. It probably adds a little extra. I'd try. I'd, well, I would, but I wouldn't be very pleasant to be around, so I think I won't be trying that. And then I'm just going to mix this up. Like I said, you can use an electric mixer and it goes a lot faster. Right. So really, so, but I'm what just, you're doing, just incorporating all mm -hmm. of this, and at all that point, good. it will go... It's going to go into my 10-inch pie crust, and then it's going to go in the oven. You're going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees, and you're going to bake this between 25 and 27 minutes. Do not overbake it. We found out that if you overbake this thing, it, it feels like a cheesecake. No way. And it's just, that's just, that ain't right. That's not So you want it to be smooth and silky. 
So yeah, okay. 25 to 27 minutes. And my my oven doesn't necessarily get as hot, so I'm finding about 27 minutes on mine. Gotcha. Does good. And if you're in Colorado in high altitudes, you probably put it on a different. Uh, oh, maybe so. Maybe so. Might have to add some flour to it or whatever. But this is just going to mix up nicely, and then we're going to get it into that pie crust. And I've seen people make this with out cooking it. And supposedly the egg cure. I'm sorry, the the lemon juice cures. Oh, the egg, like, like ceviche. ceviche. Yeah. No way. I don't feel. I don't. I don't yeah. feel too good about that. I, so I, I like a cooked. I like my eggs cooked. Right, you know. Right. When Rocky so, done it, it was okay, but they didn't. They didn't figure it out. We just, Yeah, we not. Yeah, we not. We not gonna do that. So we're gonna cook it. So you can get your work out here. So, and then I'm just going to put it in this pie crust, and I got my oven heating 350, and that's it, y'all. Well, that is luckily, it. you made one last night. I did, and I'm surprised it survived. Nobody. Because we all eat it in the It should be a house. finger dip in the hole or there, something. There, there may or may much. not be, just a may of disguise, so you don't know. But once you get it, you want it to kind of cool almost to room temperature before you put it into the refrigerator if it can last that long and then I just I like to get fancy ah, so every little some pretty, cut, mm -hmm. you, get a, you get a little you get a little, little, get a little cream yeah you get cut. a little whipped cream on there oh, and like I said this is so good and it just it cuts that tartness a little bit of that lemon and you can do your little curl if you fancy well I'll tell you what Karen this show I had a good time Mm -hmm. I had a good time doing this. We had some cool potato stuff. We got this, and I can't yep. wait to taste this. But, uh, it's so good. I'm going to tell y'all what. Y'all come back next week, and we're going to have episode two. And thank you for watching Cage of Living and Cooking. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life-threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information, dctofla.com.